Hello to everyone. We're waiting for one minute. And uh, please type your name and country. We are interested in from where you are. There are a lot of people joining. Hello yes. to everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Italy, USA, the Philippines, Bhutan. Very international participants. Yes. Germany. France, Scotland. Scotland. Russia, Nigeria. Nigeria. Mali, Mali, Turkey. Greece. Germany again and the Philippines. India, Brazil, Benin Republic. Hungary. Another colleague from Scotland. Yes. They're my students. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. This uh, webinars for them, <laughs> actually. Welcome to all of you. Different regions of IFLA, IFLA regions, representatives. <laughs> Very nice to see you here. Okay, I think we can start. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome to a webinar series for library and information science students that is brought to you by professional units of IFLA Division C. My name is Albina Krimskaya. I'm an associate professor of the St. Petersburg State University of Culture. I am the chair of the standing committee of the section on education and training set. Along with my international colleagues, I'd like to thank you for joining us uh, and uh, join this webinar that is aimed at creating a place for students to share their projects, ideas, and research about different topics in LIS field. Before we start, I'd like to express gratitude to IFLA Division 4 Chair uh, in 2019-2021, Katarina Isberg and a Section on Education and Training Chair in 2019-2021, Kendra Albright for starting the project this April. I'd also like to thank my colleagues who are so enthusiastic to continue this project in this season. Lloyd de Garcia Faber, Suzanne Lee Stratham, new professional special, interest group members, Magdalena Gamulka, who is here today, Andres Reynosa, Maya Simonovic, and Paria Tajilipur. I should also name set members, Diane Pennington and Nicole Philbrandt, who joined our project team to continue this webinar series. Special thank you to Hella Klauser from IFLA Management of Library Associations section, who proposed today's topic, international engagement and collaboration, getting started. I hope that those of you who have not been involved in the international collaboration process will be inspired by our presenters today. And those of you who are, who are involved will get more new experience and tips, and maybe next time you will become presenters at our webinar. My wish for you all is to learn from each other and share knowledge that will enrich all of us and therefore our communities. And now I turn it over to Suzanne, my co-host. Co Suzanne, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and good afternoon, everyone. Um, let me start with some notes on privacy and administration. This event is being recorded. This includes the chat. And the video will be posted on YouTube and the link will also be posted 
on IFLA Division C web page as well as the um, set sections web page and social media. Um, the microphones have been muted for this event. And if you do have questions or comments, please type them into the Q&A box. If you have questions regarding privacy, please contact professional support at ifla.org. Let me show you um, our program for today. We will have three presentations and one keynote. And we would like to start this webinar with a survey because we would like to get to know you. Please answer the questions in the survey. They will appear on your screen shortly. Magda, could you, could you start the survey? You will have two minutes to complete the survey and there will be, there are five questions in total. And we will get back to the results at the end of the webinar. So the questions are, um, do you already have experience with international work? It's a yes or not yet question. Have you already been abroad for that? Yes or no? In which of the following options did you gain international experience? You have a selection of conference, workshop, training, internship, other, or I have none yet. What benefits from international collaboration do you have? There you have a selection of, I developed my personal skills. I found out about international librarianship. I felt more confident as a librarian. I got new ideas. I developed my language skills. I met new people or I have none yet. Uh, Suzanne, um, excuse me. Uh, there is a small problem with the polling. Uh, I need to fix it. Uh, can we have a few? Uh, can I have a few minutes for that, and we can return uh, to the polling later? Yeah. So what I would propose is uh, maybe um, for us to start the keynote, and then come back to the poll after that. Thanks. Okay. Well, um, before we start our keynote, um, I would like to remind you to enter questions for our keynote speaker in the Q&A box. Um, and if not all answers can, uh, not all questions can be answered, we will answer them after the webinar. You will receive an email um, and we will also post answers on social media. I cannot um, put the next slide on. It just stays at the survey slide. But I guess I can I can start anyways. Um, today I have the honor and pleasure of introducing um, you to our keynote speaker, Hella Klauser. Her biography makes impressive reading. Um, I will only mention a few stations here. In connection with IFLA, these are the following. IFLA, uh, Hella is a member of the management of library, in, uh, library association section. Before that, she was a member of the management and marketing section. Since August this year, she's also representing Germany at IFLA's new regional division, Europe. Thank you. Since 2005, she is re responsible for international cooperation within the network of excellence for libraries at the German Library Association, coordinating IFLA issues and supporting IFLA members in Germany. Her work for association goes even further. Since 2006, she is a member of BI International to promote international professional exchange. Here, she supports professionals in becoming and being internationally active. As a librarian and library director, she also has a lot of experience. She was a library director at the um, German 
American Institute in Heidelberg and also head of the libraries of the Goethe Institute in Tokyo, Japan, Paris and Munich, Germany. In preparation of this introduction, I thought um, hard about when I, when I first had contact with Hella. And it was in preparation for the IFLA World Library and Information Congress in Columbus, Ohio in 2016. It was my first IFLA conference and um, my start into my international work. And Hella gave an introduction webinar, how IFLA works and functions, which was very helpful and um, a good orientation. And we met in person for the first time at the German caucus at the IFLA conference, the meeting of the German speaking participants. So I'm even more pleased that we can all hear and learn from her now. Her keynote address um, is called Working Internationally, Who, Why, How, Me. There she shares her wealth of experience. Hella, the floor is yours. So Susanne, thank you very much. This was really a very nice uh... Uh, introduction. I feel very pleased and honored to be here with you all today. Thank you very much for the invitation. And as you, Susanne, has uh, introduced me, you see the international relation is is my uh, work, uh, my hard work, so to see from from the heart, coming from the heart. And I really, I'm so convinced. And in our profession, we we should and have to work uh, internationally and uh, it is also a lot of fun and I hope in my presentation now I will be able to prove this to all of you and make you curious about this international side of our profession. Yes, so um, I don't see is oops. Do you see the screen my the, the slides. No, no, not yet. Okay. So I will share the screen. Just a second. So I hope. Yes, now it's fine with you, right? Yes. Oops. Okay. So yes, the title is uh, perhaps a little who, why, how, me. Uh, so the me, I thought it's uh, me. I should be working as well internationally. And um, so I hope uh, I can add a little to these answers in my presentation. Hmm. I don't know if I can do this better. So the wonderful world, yes, a part of all our problems and uh, challenges we have in our world, um, it is a bright and large world with millions of different impressions and differences. And in every corner of our world, there we will find a library. They are all very different, but the idea and the role they play are about the same. And when we look closer, we will notice that we all have kind of the same topics, problems, opportunities, cha chances, and uh, other things on our agendas. And this is good news for us to get involved internationally. So this is what I would like to talk to. Uh, about the definition. And of course, uh, I try to give some answers to the questions. And uh, yes, I will start right away with the definition. Working internationally, what does it mean? Does it mean to know what colleagues abroad in other countries are doing in libraries? Does it mean I use best practices from other colleagues in the world to, uh, to uh, make my work in my library better? Does it mean I get involved myself in international projects, for example, in international associations like IFLA or in international developments? Or does it even mean I myself go abroad? I go for a study tour 
a professional stay in another library in another country, or I uh, participate at an international conference, or I go for a study tour and visit other libraries in other countries. And uh, the question to all these questions, uh, the answer to all these questions is clear. Yes to every question. I think that working internationally is all of this. And I think we can also work internationally in a very fruitful way if we even do not travel uh, at all. And we can still be uh, working in an international surrounding and we'll still work on an international level. Yes, and here we come, not traveling at all, of course, to a big uh, subject we are all, in, all dealing with at the moment, restrictions um, because of the pandemic. So there is um, or was no traveling possible for the last months, for the last years. It still is not uh, for many uh, countries, and it still is quite difficult. Um, we all have experienced these, uh, these restrictions. But I think also we have taken a lot of um, experience out of this challenge because we have, especially also in our library field, we have learned to adjust to the situation quite quickly. And this is especially also um, true to the international field of our profession. We uh, switched very fast to using other media than meeting face to face. And this uh, webinar today is a very good example. And with using the possibilities of the internet, of webinars, of uh, online discussions, panel discussions online, um, we find a lot of um, um, positive ways of exchanging internationally. Currently, a variety of international online seminars like this one take place and they provide an excellent opportunity to connect from home and both educate yourself and via chat exchange ideas. This is very convenient to gain experience in international exchange, to change perspectives and to underpin one's own arguments internationally. At the same time, we can practice our English. I know if we are not, um, uh, our language is, um, English is not our mother tongue's language, which in most cases it is not the, the case, then we sometimes are shy and we think, oh, English, uh, it's a, it's a difficult, I will not be able to understand what others are talking about and uh, participating in an online seminar, nobody will ask you, do you understand? You can try out by yourself, you can gain experiences, you will find that you will understand much more than perhaps you thought of, and you can type, uh, type into the chat and see if uh, your English also is understood by others. I think this is a very easy and convenient way to try out things and also our language skills. So we do not have to travel, we have no jet lag, no precautionary vaccinations, we have no fear of finding our way in a different uh, other surrounding. It is uh, sometimes scary if you travel alone by yourself to participate in an international conference. So here you can do all this uh, from your home or, or from your office, and this is good. Um, you can also, also this webinar will be registered, it will be uh, recorded, so you can choose your time to um, uh, to uh, participate in it. You do not have to do it when they offer it, but you can do it in different times. And many on online webinars are free of charge as well. So this is another good point. So there are many, many possibilities at the moment in this uh, time of uh, travel restrictions to try out working, being, thinking, 
internationally. And I would really um, suggest that you take the chance you did today. So do it again and again and try out if you follow and you can also uh, get your first contacts already by um, participating in more online webinars. But of course, I have to say uh, as well, uh, participating face to face in an international meeting or coming together for a big international conference like uh, the IFLA annual uh, Congress, um, this is uh, something else. And we hope, we all hope that uh, we will be able to travel again here and there in the future to also have this wonderful um, meetings live and face to face. Uh, but I also think and also hope that these possibilities we have now um, tried out during the pandemic will also continue because it is a very good way of coming together um, in, uh, in an, in, on an international level. So first question, question who? Who should work internationally? And uh, I think my questions are quite easy <laughs> because we all say yes, yes, yes. Um, we all, all of us should work internationally. Why? Because it's a global world. It is one world, as I said at the beginning, there are libraries all over and we all have the same uh, purpose. So it would be crazy not to work together. And um, uh, all of us it means not only the directors of our libraries, um, but all, all who are involved in library work. Um, this, this is the, the basis, I think. So, of course, um, when we see a participation in international conferences, um, also means uh, if we have uh, to travel, it is also a question of money. And here we quite often have the question of hierarchy. It means there is not enough money in your um, library, in your institution to uh, let everybody um, travel. So it is quite often the case that uh, it is just the director who is allowed or who will travel to, to some place for participating at a conference. I hope I will find some arguments and, and show you some arguments later to perhaps convince your director to also be part of, um, of the team to travel. But here we have to see that we have to convince our directors that it is important to for all of us to work um, in an international way and to exchange uh, in our within our work on every level. Yes, why? Why should we work internationally? We all have enough to do in our daily work uh, without the international um, um, adding on. Um, I have put on, uh, I will present only 10 reasons to you. There are many, many more, I think, but uh, I want to present these 10 reasons why should we work and think internationally. The first reason, of course, it will enrich our or your personal and professional development. Professional, of course, if we learn from others, we become better in our own uh, work uh, situation. And working internationally always also, I'm convinced about that, uh, is uh, for our personal development. It enriches us if we have to tackle with other cultures, if we get other arguments. So the personal development is also very important for each of us. We can um, network. We find people uh, in the world who are like-minded, um, who have the same problem. And quite often uh, we find better solutions if we exchange and get together for a problem or for a project. Um, 
working internationally also strengthens our self-esteem. Um, as I said before, sometimes you get a little afraid uh, when you think, oh, the international conference is far away. Um, I have to travel alone. I don't know when I arrive at the airport, how do I get to, to the hotel? Do they understand me? Do I find my way? What do I do if everybody at the conference know, seems to know each other and I'm all by myself? There are many of these um, fears you have, and I can tell you everybody has a similar fears, especially when we start uh, working uh, internationally. Um, and when you come back and you managed, you found your hotel and you found some contacts do the, during the conference and you were not alone, you feel really, really good. And this strengthens your self-esteem. The same with your language skills. I talked about that already. If you feel that uh, your English is not as bad as you thought, this also makes you proud. And I can tell you, most of us, um, uh, the English, the mother tongue English um, is not English. So most of us all deal with the same problems. And so we understand each other if, uh, and if my English is not so well, um, we understand very well and we ask, what did you mean? Or please uh, repeat in other words. So this is not a burden anymore. Yes, and of course, another topic for yourself is um, you increase your chances on the labor market if you can prove that you have ex international experience, that you participated in an international project, that you have contacts abroad. Now let's have a look at um, other um, motivation factors concerning your, the library you are working in or you will be working in. If you bring back new ideas um, or experience, then uh, you can be the driver of innovation in your library, which means you say, oh, I, it's in the library I visited, they do it that way. And do, shouldn't we try it out ourselves? It seems much better than we do it. So you can be uh, innovating, bring innovation into your library. Uh, then also international uh, arguments are very important for your uh, advocacy work, for lobbying. When you have an argument and you say, look at uh, this or that country, they have this already for many years and we still don't have it. Sometimes uh, decision makers or politicians say, hmm, okay, I should have another thought about this. You can also use the internationalization as a marketing tool. Even if you invite uh, international guests into your library and you invite your press, local press as well, it is, it is great. You show my library is interesting for others. They come, they have a look, uh, or I, I uh, welcome uh, uh, colleagues from abroad, um, or I travel somewhere. This is great using as a marketing tool. Yes, and all this together is also, we look only, we do not only look at our library itself, but we also look at our libraries in our country. So if more of us bring in this international experience, then of course our library landscape, is, landscape as a whole is also becoming better, that's for sure. And last but not least, I want also, I want to say that um, um, this, I, I think it sounds so great, you know, we improve the world, of course, we try our best, but our <laughs> possibilities are limited. But also here, if we all do it uh, together and try to improve a little tiny bit of our world by having uh, good libraries and by exchanging our um, uh, our experiences, then I'm also convinced that uh, we will be moving into the right and positive direction. So we shouldn't be shy of saying this once in a while. 
Okay, so the next question would be, uh, which countries are interesting library countries? So where should I go? Okay, I want to, to see other libraries, I want to exchange, where should I go? And you will uh, imagine again, my question will be, you can go wherever you want to, you will profit out of going and having experiences in every country in the world because we have libraries in every country of the world. This is for sure. Then, of course, um, it also depends on what you want to experience. What topic is it you want to see when you travel? Because, you know, you cannot only say, oh, I want to see libraries in this country because I like this country or because I want, always wanted to travel to this country. No, it is a professional uh, stay. So it is, uh, should be a professional topic. You want to deal uh, being abroad then. And there it may make def differences and it does make differences if you want to research or gain experiences concerning digitization projects in another library or library services in a library or about marketing and every topic we deal with in our libraries. Of course, there are um, some countries which are stronger already in some countries where, which are stronger in other uh, topics. So we should get we have to know before we want to travel somewhere, what do we want to see, what do we want to experience, and which country is good for this. Sometimes uh, you also say I can speak my mother language and uh, English, so then uh, perhaps you should go to a country where English is spoken or where colleagues in the libraries also know how to speak English. And then, of course, a geography, where to travel, it is also a question of money. Going far away is much more expensive than going to your neighboring country. Uh, here you always have to see how can I finance this traveling and um, uh, where do I get uh, the money for traveling? Um, yes, but uh, it's for sure you can make discoveries in every country. And also it is always a give and a take. So when you travel, you always um, also, you, you do not only take experiences, information from the others, but you always also give because you, you talk to the people, you give your uh, um, experiences from your country. So this is always very important, also very important to have these, these relation, taking and giving. But as I said, it is important to know where you find what you are looking for, for your professional visit, professional stay. And here, um, it is um, unfortunately a little related to my home uh, country, which is Germany. So I'm sure in your country, there is also information about other library countries. So we for Germany have um, are collecting reports from the library scene in other countries and have them on our uh, have them online here, or we collect uh, reports from former scholarships who had been abroad already. So to get information, which country could be interesting for my uh, topic. And then, of course, we have the uh, IFLA library map of the world. Uh, run by IFLA, and here you will also find a lot of information if you are interested in a special country concerning the library scene there. So try out the IFLA library map of the world. So now let's see how to get started. You want to work internationally. Yes, I have decided. So what do I do? So first thing is the information. We talked about that. You need information. And for this, you need enough time for a good planning. It is, you know, it is a big subject. You cannot say, okay, I have some time during summer vacation. I, 
I will go for it. But for a professional stay, so you come back and you have gained uh, experiences for your work, you need a good planning. Uh, and you need enough time for that. You have to uh, plan well in advance. Uh, you have to uh, gain the necessary information. You have to compare uh, expectations, not that you also have to see what can I do uh, in that country? What can I gain uh, during uh, five days of uh, being you know, somewhere? Um, so you will um, have to to plan very well. Um, and you have to organize all this stuff. Yes. And have a look at your own country. Uh, most of the time, there is a lot you can uh, also uh, connect to in your own country because many colleagues, libraries, associations are already working internationally and have a lot of contacts. So use them, talk to them, get in contact with them, and they will um, be happy to support you, to give you information. And then we have this uh, topic of funding. Yes, how to get funding. And here, if uh, for, for Europe, uh, we have these uh, European exchange programs, which is great. But of course, uh, for many countries, this is not possible. But also ask your national library associations and look at the guest country. Perhaps they can support your stay. And here I can also uh, only talk about uh, Germany again. For Germany, we do have possibilities to support, not to finance totally, but to support you when you want to come for a professional stay or visit a library in Germany. So get information about this. Yes, and for Germany, for example, we have this BI internationally. Um, here is the website, biinternational.de, and you can find information there. Uh, I want to finish with um, this. Start your international engagement now. I think it's the best time of your life to start as early as possible. Um, and it is now to start. And I would really suggest to start with LIFA's new professional special interest group. There is everything you need to, to jump into the international experience. And uh, Magda is here. You can uh, ask her uh, and uh, for her, perhaps also uh, for your, the next webinar, you will get more information. But I would say this is the first step. IFLA's new professionals special interest group. And for um, Europe, there is also a very interesting conference. It's the Bobcats. It's an annual conference. It is prepared by LIS students for LIS students. So have a look here as well. It will be next year in Hungary in May. And um, it is also hybrid. So if you do not, uh, you will not be able to travel to Hungary, you can take part uh, online. So this is exactly for the group of LIS students. These two I will mention because of the um, language English. ALA, the American Library Association, is also, of course, uh, very much engaged in international matters, the IRRT, and SILIPS um, in the United uh, Kingdom, Scotland, uh, is also very strong in students and new professionals communities. So have a look there as well. There are many other initiatives. I will not um, get into them in detail now, but um, uh, have a look at your, all, uh, your own national associations. And uh, they also sometimes, you know, they will uh, have international projects and will support you in your ideas. 
So all I can only say is me, yes, you, go for it. Why not? And just get started. And for this, I wish you all the best and good luck. Thank you so much, Hella, Thank for you. this very insightful, um, interesting and motivating presentation and all the good tips that you gave. Um, in addition, I would also like to refer to the BSLISE working group. It's a working group um, devoted to strengthening the international quality of LIS education. And if you're interested, please do get in touch um, on bslise.org. Um, I will now have a quick look at the chat box if there are any questions for Hella. If you do have questions for Hella, please put them in the, in the Q&A box. And let me just quickly say that um, the survey uh, we did in the beginning, it, it worked. And we've got a lot of answers, nearly 100 answers, and we will close the survey now. So just one quick question for you, Hella. Um, do you still remember your first international conference? I can't hear you. Yes, yes, I remember very well my first uh, participation at an IFLA uh, World Conference. Uh, it was 2003 in Berlin, in Germany. That is why I participated. And I remember very well, I talked about this in my presentation as well, I felt so lost and lonely. Uh, I had the impression everybody knew already, they, they all knew each other, but uh, I thought, wow, so many colleagues from all over the world, how will I ever get to know them? How should I, you know, where should I start? And now when I go after some other <laughs> participations at uh, IFLA congresses, when I now come to a congress, it's a hello here and oh, you're back and uh, good to see you. It, it is like coming back to a family reunion. So um, I think uh, this is a, the hard uh, start, uh, which uh, we have to go through to gain experience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hella. Thank you. You're welcome. I would like to go to the next slide, but it seems that it's not working. I will give it another go. It's oh, oh, it looks like we have a question uh, that just came in. Do we have time for one? So there is a question for Hella, uh, which is, um, how do you think new graduate students with financial situations can start uh, collaborating internationally? Um, well, as I said, I think you can start right away by using all the online tools. Working internationally does not mean that you 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 travel somewhere, and and you know traveling is cost expensive. But if you start your networking, your exchange, uh, like today with these these online webinars, or using uh, really the the exchange of uh, the IFLA new professional group or other groups, um, there you will find other LIS students from other countries, and then step by step, you know you you get to know uh, each other, you um, gain experience. And you also exchange how to, you know, then there will be a conference and you say, how, how can we get there? So it is, yeah, I think really step by step and th these online tools for this is uh, fantastic, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, 
uh, next on the program are our three sessions from the uh, LIS student speakers. And today we have a very international group. They are from universities from Nigeria, France, and the Philippines. And our first speaker is Gozi Perpeto Osukovsku from Nigeria. Um, she has a master's degree in library and information science. She's currently a PhD student. And she's been participating in international conferences since 2015, for example, the IFLA conferences. Today, she will talk about taking a chance on LIS international engagement. Bozi, you have 15 minutes and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Good afternoon all, can you hear me? Can you yes. hear me? Yes, loud and clear. All right, thank you. Um, I would like to share my screen, do I go on? Do yes, I go please. on? Yes, please. All right, thank you. All right, can you see my screen? Can you see yes, my yes, screen, please? Yes, we, yes, we can. All right, yes, okay. All right. My name is Ngozi Pepeshua Osushuku from Nigeria. I'm a PhD student in library and information science from Nandia Zikewe University, Oka, Anambra State, Nigeria. I want to share my experiences with the title, Taking a Chance on LIS International Engagement. I've always believed in professional and personal development. And I also believe that conference has a way of setting one apart from others. I also believe that it builds confidence, sharpens acumen and creates opportunities. Now, why am I doing this? Because I want to share my, I want to share motivational factors. I want to share my personal experiences. I want to tell my success stories and the lessons I learned all those times I was at international conferences. How am I gonna do this? I will do a narration and I'll do that with images. Now, what and what are the outcomes of those conferences I've been attended? I must state here that I started my, that I made a debut in 2015 in IFLA conference in Cape Town, South Africa. What actually made me to go to that conference was because it was in Africa. So I said, this is my continent. Let me start from here. And I sent an abstract so a session, CPDL, Continued Professional Development Session, they accepted my abstract. So that set my, my heart on fire on getting ready for IFLA 2015 in South Africa. So from there, I got the rotation letter, I registered and I went. I presented my, my first paper there in South Africa. Another outcome from all these international conferences and engagements was that I met professionals and I made uh, collaborations, which are still going on today. I've also sustained very important relationships that, have, that are now helping me in going further and in building my career in LIS. I've also have series of free IFLA conference registration from 2017 to date, yes. In 2017, I applied for IFLA AR session, and I won the best essay in Africa region. For winning that best essay, they gave me free registration. They also gave me 700 euro cash for that conference. And that, you know, I, I was so excited that I got it. It also set my heart on fire. After that 2017 um, 17, uh, scholarship, I also applied for new professionals. In 2018, I also got it. I did the same in 2019, I also got free registration. 
2020 was COVID. Then this present 2021, I also applied and I enjoyed IFLA conference online free of charge. Why am I saying this? Because I love what I do. And, what, and I always look out for this uh, scholarship, these uh, free registration, these uh, waivers. So whenever I see it, I took action, I write. And somehow my applications have always been accepted. Now, another outcome from these conferences was that I was elected into IFLA Africa uh, committee. I served for two years and currently I was also elected into IFLA Sub-Sahara Africa region, which we are going to do in the next two years. I've also benefited in free IFLA Jonah uh, research organized by IFLA Jonah. And of course, um, with the editor, Steve Witts. We did that in, in Athens in 2019, and we were paid. We are given 300 euro, even when we were registered free for that training. I've also attended AFLIA conference in Cameroon, Yaoundé, Cameroon. So these outcomes are very important. And I've, I can say that I've enjoyed my international conferences and engagement. These are some of the posters I do. And I want to say something. For every IFLA conference I attended, I've always participated actively. I've never gone to any conference as a mere observer. It's either I would present a poster or I would present a paper. Since 2015 till date, I've always presented an IFLA conference. I either present a poster or I present a paper. From the picture, you can see this is Malaysia 2018. I had a poster in USA 2016. I also had a poster. This picture now is, the, is when I was given the award. This award was powered by Procast um, and OCLC and SAGE, of course. So I was given the award during the award session in IFLA. In IFLA. Then the other picture is during my presentation in IFLA Africa session. Now, what are the lessons I've learned so far? I learned that international conference and engagement give you visibility. Since I've been attending this, I've been engaging internationally, even locally. I get referral. I've been able to do so many things, you know, connecting with LIS, professionals outside Nigeria, even within Nigeria. I've collaborated with people I've never seen, but we have successful collaboration online because I attended conferences and I engaged in so many LIS activities. I also learned that international conference and engagement gives room for collaboration. Just like I said earlier, I collaborate so much with people, LIS professionals all over the globe. It also adds, adds values. Yes, I can say that my values, what I've known now, you know, I've known so much from what I knew before and my knowledge keeps increasing. I also learned from these conferences and engagement that IFLA and even AFLIA there is this kind of acceptance they give to people. Small things matter to them. It doesn't matter who you are or where you came from or whatever, just like Hela said in the beginning, you are accepted however you are and whatever you are. So a student anywhere in the world can step out and take action. Anybody can do it. I didn't know I can do this until I started. There is always the first time. And believe me, I've been to, I've attended IFLA six times and four out of the six, I was given waiver registration. I, I did a free registration. And this is a big plus to me because I know that I wouldn't have you know, afforded the money to do all this. But those free registrations, those cash I was given helped me a lot. And it keeps my heart burning for LIS. So this profession accepts anyone who is willing to create the chance and strategize on innovative information services, just like I'm doing. I love this profession. And I know that this profession loves me back. And I'm going 
going to do much, much more because I believe there are lots of things out there to do. Libraries are full of possibilities. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much for this energetic and motivating um, personal report. And I can only confirm that international conferences, they open a lot of doors and um, the motivation is very high, high to participate again and again. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, um, our next speaker is Tamara Gulshet Kaya. She's a second year master student in a program Rare Books and Digital Humanities at the University uh, Bourgogne-Francais Comté in France. She has a bachelor degree in LIS um, from the St. Petersburg State University of Culture. And today she will talk about the power of study trips. Tamara, um, the floor is yours. You have 15 minutes now. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. I'm glad to be here today and share my experience and ideas about international engagement and collaboration. I will focus on study trips uh, as a way to be involved in international engagement and collaboration and what impact it may have on professional growth. First of all, I would like to talk about opportunities and challenges uh, students might face at the initial stage. We all know that students are full of energy, they can generate new ideas for research and project activity, but at the same time, they often need a push and inspiration to do this. Besides, they need support from teachers and discuss professional possibilities with foreign specialists. Library Information Science Department of the St. Petersburg State University of Culture supports students and suggests them a lot of opportunities for international engagement and collaboration. Among these opportunities are class assignment uh, aimed at researching international activity of libraries and discussions, talking at the conferences, uh, study trips to other countries. I was lucky to be involved in all uh, these opportunities. The most interesting uh, and um, important event uh, that enriched me and gave me an opportunity to enroll to the master program in France was a study trip in 2018 to Germany. It was second time when the department received the funding. Uh, this study trip was funded by German Academic Exchange Service, DART, in the frame of the program study visits by groups of foreign students. The objectives of a study trip are to establish and maintain contacts between German and foreign universities to provide participants with the subject specific knowledge by organizing uh, visits to at least two universities, subject related tours and informative meetings to promote meetings with German students and academics and scientists to offer participants an insight into economic, political and cultural life in Germany. I want to talk more about my own experience that was in uh, 2018. For participating in the study trip, students uh, had to meet uh, the requirements. Uh, for being in the group, uh, a high uh, level of English, interest in the research, ability to work by self. However, one of the aims of the trip also was to gather data for conducting research in one of the least uh, topics. In Russia, students were supposed to choose a topic in this uh, field to make preliminary research, and then in Germany to discuss this topic with international colleagues and search for more necessary data. My research was open access, and it was important for me to find out what law acts determine OA movement, how it was developed, now uh, how libraries and universities work with this, and what they think about it. Before the trip, I prepared a questionnaire with issues that bothered me. During the trip, I asked international colleagues uh, I met and I asked them to fill out a form. At the beginning, I was afraid to the colleagues uh, were busy and uh, to discuss this with me. And I did not uh, want to bother them also. 
However, I started to receive answers by mail from uh, these colleagues already after the trip, and I was surprised. They not only answered my questions, but also recommended me some articles on my topic. Besides, we continued to communicate later. Uh, this, this experience helped me to deepen my knowledge uh, about international cooperation. And this study trip give, gave me an opportunity to make own um, new connections and between countries and receive more relevant result, uh, results during the research. Moreover, I continued to work on the topic open access in the frame of my thesis. And the main reason for this topic was and remains actual and important. Besides, uh, for preparing the trip, we had weekly meetings um, where we discussed different aspects uh, of the future study trip. We read professional uh, literature, studied terms, learned culture of Germany, and the whole preparation for this trip took four months. Uh, back to the trip, we visited nine cities. It's uh, Berlin, Hamburg, Mainz, Stuttgart, Deiburg, uh, Deiburg Frankfurt, uh, Bad Homburg, Cologne, uh, Heidelberg. During the trip, the group visited nine libraries and four lease universities in Germany. And each university visited by the group uh, has an interesting model of lease education. Uh, the Humboldt University of Berlin has mission to promote research uh, activities through a system of modern ped pedagogy. Uh, they were listened to a lecture by uh, Michael Siedel, uh, what was dedicated to manipulations in the news. And during the lecture, professor tried to involve students um, <clears throat> so that they would think, uh, express their opinions and uh, assumptions, and not just listen. Stuttgart Media uh, University, Hochschule der Medien, uh, uses a project-based method and trying to get away from uh, the word library. And professors uh, consider this education is more than a rotation in the library world. Professor Magnus Pfeffer accompanied us and he gave a lecture in which uh, he said that the department is trying to remove, remove the word library which scares students, all the library are no longer the same as uh, they were before and require more technical knowledge and work with media. Darmstadt University of Applied Sciences oriented on computer uh, disciplines, for example, web design and open access, electronic publishing. And when communicating with professors, I was pleasantly surprised that students have a large selection of topics as part uh, of their thesis, and it is possible to create a repository, for example. But such a project can only be taken by master's degree students. Technology Art uh, Sciences, uh, TH Cologne, separates students in groups in accordance with the type of library where students will work. Each university tries to find uh, a way to attract students and to promote this education. And during the tour, students got to know about promoting open access, professional journals, and students' projects. And uh, I can say that German universities use new technologies for building a strong system of education. One of the important parts in the educational trip was visits to libraries. And the most unforgettable visit uh, was in German National Library of Economics. And uh, now in the slide, uh, you can notice that it was really pleasant to see uh, this uh, post about our visit. So we just already know that they prepared for us and just prepared some uh, presentations. And the most uh, unforgettable um, think it was and we were really really surprised that the director of the library klaus dr man wel welcomed us and he talked about the center and presented a repository econ store which allows publishing scientific work written by scholars and students the library is also developing its uh, econ beast project it is a portal in the field of economics and business research it includes a literature search on german and international databases and in addition to the search, it has a calendar of events, which includes all important dates uh, of conferences and events related to economics. Also, we made a tour around the center and the 
next library, it was uh, the Stuttgart Public Library. Uh, was founded in 1997 and became really famous due to the modern and unusual building what was built in uh, 2011. And in total, the building has nine floors, one of um, uh, the most excited for me. It was uh, the first floor, uh, what was specialized in musical literature. Uh, the second in children's literature, the third is focused on religious, philosophical, medical and sport literature and etc. So we can notice that library decided to separate all uh, flaws by kind of literature. And it's really amazing when you can arrive and you know what flaw you have to choose. The next uh, library, it was uh, the Colon Public Library and can be described as the modern and creative. Uh, the organization has a large music collection. There are also music rooms where you can freely play the piano and have the opportunity to listen uh, to music on a turntable or tape recorder. There is also a large children's sector where children are at, like at home and students perform tasks. If we turn to uh, the present, the library has a robot named No, no uh, which can charge uh, and talk. The library also conducts workshops on the use of 3D printer. Uh, also, I want to mention Bundestag Library uh founded in 1949 it currently has more than one uh and uh, 400 million volumes in its collection and the fund mainly consists of political legal and economic literature um, library users often use uh electronic versions uh, of publications including periodicals and the benefits of this library for users namely members of the Bundestag. Um, enormous it's not empty and the fund is uh, replenished every year and specialists in their field work in the library they might uh, must have a library education the educational trip enable russian students to learn German uh, list um, system of list education and libraries also the trip gave new ideas for improving some things in educational system of the St. Petersburg State University of Culture. And thus this type of the knowledge exchange allows students to improve their professional level and to receive interesting idea for future research. Also, it helps to network and maintain partnership. Moreover, this trip, one of the main pushes for me to find a master's degree abroad. The study trip gave me a chance to see what lectures can be, uh, how it's to study in another country and another language. And nowadays I can present my origin country and tell international colleagues about our projects, universities and institutions. It helps creating new relations between countries and promote international cooperation. For example, I heard from colleagues that sometimes it's difficult to find people in Russian libraries who will speak in English or will be ready to communicate. When I heard this, I was disappointed, uh, but I have a hope that it was just a mistake and someone didn't read letters. I want to talk also about possibilities uh, what offered by my university in France. Uh, firstly, my university participates in the program Erasmus, what offers to make exchange programs from three to 12 months. Due to this program, I met a lot of students from different countries who was related to the world of books. Second thing is the university offers to go to take an internship um, abroad. And for this goal, students can ask about scholarship. This university supports international exchange and collaboration. My master program has several options for students for develop international relations. Uh, it's an agreement between several universities in Italy and Russia. In this case, students can take a scholarship and go to study there for six or more months. Besides professors uh, at my university tries to offer students participate in conferences and seminars and have an opportunity to talk with colleagues from different countries. We had already conferences with colleagues from Italy, uh, the USA and Dubai. Unfortunately, we don't have an opportunity to go to other countries due to the COVID. Uh, participation in such activities as conferences, study trips and seminars and webinars gave me some ideas how to develop and promote international engagement and collaboration. And in conclusion, um, I can say that study trips and online events uh, is a way to support international engagement and collaboration. I know that um, sometimes it's really difficult to find uh, some of the fund uh, for the study trips, uh, but I think if uh, 
the university will be uh, interested in, uh, so it will be easier and it will be really helpful for students. And maybe it will be like uh, some push to another uh, maybe level of study or work or internship abroad. I, in the ideal version, surely uh, it would be great to organize projects in which uh, students from different universities from different countries would participate. And I know that such projects uh, exist, but not enough. And sometimes it hides from students. Thank you so much for the attention. Thank you very much for this interesting presentation. And also um, the description of, of how you experienced your study trip and um, the impact it had afterwards. Thank you very much. Our last speaker today is Martin Julius Perez from the Philippines. He's a licensed librarian and works as a communication officer at the Department of Foreign Affairs. Um, he's also a lecturer and a master's student at the School of Library and Information Science at the University of the Philippines in Diliman. He will talk about international early career development experience from and the impact of the J. Jordan IFLA OCLC Early Career Development Fellowship. Martin, the floor is yours. Good, af good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to our uh, audience. Um, hello. Um, I would be discussing about international early career development. And my ex this is from my experience from the 2015 J. Jordan IFLA OCLC Early Career Development Fellowship in the USA. So the question that I would like to uh, answer or maybe share with you is how does international early career development would help the LIS profession? Um, my presentation will be divided into three parts. Of course, the discussion about the specific program for international early development, uh, early career develop development, which is the J. Jordan IFLA OCLC Early Career Development Fellowship the experience we had in 2015, and lastly, the impact of the program to librarians or LIS professionals like me, specifically my own experience. So the J. Jordan IFLA OCLC Early Career Development Fellowship Program with a very long name is one of the, uh, so far, uh, one of the uh, best uh, fellowship program available for LIS Early career or early career librarians or LIS professionals. And um, these, as of now, has 95 early career LIS professionals who have joined the program since it was launched in 1999. And we're in the first cohort or the first group of fellows were uh, uh, started in 2001. So it covers around 42 countries. So it uh, has uh, participants from over 42. 42 countries, and it has 19 batches of fellows all in all in a group of uh, four or five in, in a batch. This program provides early career development and continuing education in the U.S., in the United States of America, wherein the OCLC is located for library and information science professionals from countries with developing economies. So that is uh, their requirement. Uh, the fellowship program is uh, promotes librarianship globally as aligned with the theme of this webinar series and to develop champions uh, and rising leaders from these countries that the developing economies countries and it is jointly sponsored by the international federation of library association or ifla institutions or ifla and oclc so this is a uh, uh, funded by OCLC, and the program was developed by IFLA and OCLC together. 
So the question, uh, who can participate in this program and why were we able to participate in this program, by the way? So they focus or they target early career professionals. And how do we define or who are these early career professionals that we have? The definition varies for early career professionals, especially in the different professions. In the LIS, and based on the eligibility of those who can join the program, they are those who have a degree in library and information science obtained within the past five years and have at least three years, but no more than eight years of library or information science experience. So in my case, um, I, I graduated for my undergraduate degree in 2011 and joined the program in 2015. So I, I at least have three years of library experience from the Philipp in the Philippines when I joined the program, when I was selected in the program. Okay, let me share with you the experience. So the, the fellowship is a four-week program that happened in the headquarters of OCLC in Ohio, USA. And um, in 2015, it happened during um, um, from 11 of April to May 9, 2015. I am lucky to be part of this five uh, fellow group, which includes um, the first one is Istanis uh, from, from Serbia, the girl in the middle. She's Istanis Lava Gardevšek, uh, the li a librarian from the National Library of Serbia. Um, the other woman in orange and green is Sadaf Rafik, a librarian from Pakistan. The other librarian, girl librarian, is Nomsa Matabela. He, she's also, she's from Swaziland. And the other librarian is Masimba Muriza, Mur, Mur, Muriza, Murinzanga, librarian from Zimbabwe. So the various regions of, uh, of, of the world is represented when they select participants for this uh, program. Okay, in our experience, we, the fellows, as they call us, because this is a fellowship, visit many libraries, cultural heritage institutions, and library organizations. Among those are the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian Museums, Archives, the various museums, uh, anthropological, um, natural sciences, and, um, and other museums, found in the center of the US. And also, we also visited academic libraries, school libraries, of course, public libraries. In our experience also, they gave us the opportunity to meet leading information practitioners from OCLC and from IFLA and explore topics related to LIS particularly and not limited to information technologies, library operations and management, and of course, global cooperative librarianship. In this picture, we met the secretary, the then secretary general of IFLA, Ms. Jennifer Nicholson, wherein she was able to present to us and discuss with us what can be, what can we contribute to IFLA and what and how does IFLA works. And, as, as selected fellows, how can we, and in our own countries, help IFLA and its goals? Another part of the experience uh, of joining the program is to observe the OCLC governance structure in action. So there is the OCLC Global Council, which is composed of various stakeholders from all over the globe. And in one of their meetings, in an international meetings, we were able to join them, part, uh, part, talk to them, meet them, and listen to how, how they work as a, as a council on their decision makings, on their projects, and on the collaboration that emanates from their experiences and uh, libraries. So from this, we gained insights into issues affecting the global library cooperative, an actual library global cooperative 
happening in 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 uh, happening through the OCLC. Another part of our experience is to give presentation about our home countries and the libraries and also to discuss real world solutions to the challenges that our libraries in our home countries are facing today. Through this experience, we learned about each, each country's portfolios of libraries. So for, for some uh, of us, some problems are just easy, but for some countries, it's a very big, it's a, it's a big problem. And we try to give um, opinions and su suggestions on how um, they can help uh, their own library association, libraries, or maybe their home institutions in solving these problems. So from this experience, I was able to gain um, cultural sensitivity and at the same time, understand how uh, libraries works in another country or how a librarian like me working in the Philippines will uh, experience if I will be situated in another country. So this experience actually strengthens and uh, develop my empathy at the same time and um, knowledge of how to approach and how to understand each other situations in this LIS profession. Another part of our experience is to translate our learning and experiences into a specific professional development plan. So this is something that is uh, for each of our individual development, how we will grow in the profession, how do we see ourselves in the future, how, how can we contribute to the LIS profession through this program, and how can our personal contributions to our home institution and country of origin be of help to the international collaboration and uh, global librarianship. So as part of the program is also to share our experiences, of course, in, in, in symposiums like this, to be able to inspire the global librarianship. I will now discuss the impact of the uh, fellowship program in various levels, such as in the personal career development, in our home institutions or country of origins, in the LIS profession in general, and on international cooperation or collaboration. So um, for this one, I tried to ask the fellows from the Philippines, so those who participated in the program in the span of two decades, and they give me this um, uh, answers. So let us just uh, analyze it through by just simply reading and understanding what they have learned or uh, their insights from the fellowship program. So one of them answered, I'm truly happy because after two weeks of my return, I was able to share my acquired knowledge through a presentation lecture. Likewise, I was able to have a proper presentation of research I made after the program. Another said, the experience gave me a wider perspective about the profession. It also gave me the confidence to voice out my opinion and express my thought, which made my colleagues listen and value my point of view. Another person said that the program has helped him or her focus on the attainment of his or her long-term career goals. My experience taught me to look forward, to, to look beyond the four walls of the library and always remind me that our libraries here in the Philippines is still a long way to reach and the status of, of those other countries and inspire me to be a better information professional with limited resources that I can have. Another said, I believe that the fellowship program inspired me to reach my goals and objectives in this profession. It honed my potentials in the profession and inspired me to dream and aspire more. Another one said, what uh, impact me most is the real realization of the important role of public libraries in the development of a society. And another person said, I, I gained international friends and peers, which broadened my LIS network. Also, uh, part of the, um, of the impact of the fellowship program is it uh, developed or maybe uh, 
there were emerging leaders or emerging uh, uh, allies leaders now. Uh, from the beginning of the program, there are two of them. Tuba Akbay Turk from Turkey, who is now a library director in the University of Library of Uni in the Koch University Library in Turkey. Rashida Bol Sahan, 2001 fellow also from Malaysia, who is now also the CEO of the Sarawak State Library in Malaysia. And J.K. V. Vijaya Kumar, 2002 fellow from India, is now the library director of the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia. So here are some of my, I would like to, to end with some of the insights that I gained from the fellowship program. So early career professionals are the future of the profession and by honing and assisting them in their early careers means planning for the profession. And this program is one of those that helps like, uh, like early career librarians like me uh, in developing our skills and honing our uh, experiences to contribute to the, to the profession in the future. Usually early career professionals do not have much experience in the LIS profession, but the important contribution they bring in are their fresh perspectives and potential. Participation in early career development programs, especially internationally, provides a positive and lasting impact in the advancement of their careers and all of these professionals. And I can attest to this because I think that the fellowship program becomes one of my uh, 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 inspiration to work for the international field to contribute to international works, international collaboration, particularly in LIS. And I'm actually working now for on records and um, archives management. And at the same time, um, help the early career professionals in, in realizing this goal. International Early Career Development Program provides international perspective that broadens one's, one's outlook personally so culturally and professionally. So it's not just about the profession. It's also about the person. It's a personal growth, the cultural growth of the person. And exposure to international development programs like this will help them. Um, I believe in the ripple effect. Um, Sorry, Martin, we are almost running out of time. Could you please wrap it up? OK, yes, this is the last slide. OK, uh, the ripple effect uh, by giving back mindset and to inspire the next generation through the works and uh, through my experience. And lastly, experience like this gives a lot of ideas and realization. It answers questions and creates more opportunities in the profession, in your home country and internationally. And um, by that, by sharing this experience, I hope to inspire global librarianship. Uh, and thank you for listening. Thanks very much uh, to Martin and to all four of our great presenters today. I really enjoyed hearing everybody. Uh, we're just out of time. So uh, what I think I'll do now is I'll just share the results of the survey so everyone can kind of see the responses. So uh, definitely uh, some people really wanting, 96% of you want more information or more experience about international uh, librarianship which is wonderful. Um, myself being in my third country of residence and employment in my career, I can say it's really a wonderful thing to do. Uh, so just a couple of things. Uh, what we'll try to do is maybe summarize some of the comments and uh, the presentations on our social media channels. So you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on the IFLA website and I believe Instagram to see some, some points from today. I've taken a lot of notes and so we can share the comments from those of you who typed in the chat box and from the presentations. And uh, just to invite you as well to next Fridays, which will be at the same time next week. So 4 p.m. Central European uh, summertime, whatever time that is, wherever you are. And next week's keynote will be IFLA's president-elect, Tonya Arakova, and her talk will be on IFLA's new structure, collaboration in motion. 
So please be sure to attend that to hear her. And if you are interested in presenting yourself next week as one of our student or new professional speakers, uh, please look at the link on our website about how to submit your idea and we'll see if we can get you on next week's webinar. So thank you again to our wonderful speakers and to everyone who joined us today. And we hope that you've enjoyed this as much as we have. And we hope to see you next week as well at next week's part two of, of this particular part of the series. So thank you very much and have a great weekend to everyone.